If you've been on social media at all over the past few days, then you know every single person on your entire timeline has expressed support for Black Lives Matter. Not just support for black people. Everybody supports black people. Nobody thinks black lives don't matter. But specifically for this organization, a radical leftist organization called Black Lives Matter. And if anybody has not expressed support for Black Lives Matter, uh, probably they faced some negative consequences. There's been a lot of pressure to do this. Well, a friend of mine, who maybe you know from the internet, he's an author, he's a podcaster, he's the ho- host and author of Rules for Retrogrades, Timothy Gordon, he spoke out against Black Lives Matter. He contradicted the leftist orthodoxy, and he has been fired from his job teaching at a Catholic school, a Catholic school, because of that. And so now, because Tim has opposed this radical leftist movement, he is no longer able to bring home a paycheck for his wife and six children, one of whom has serious health problems in addition to, you know, just just the normal difficulties of raising a family. Tim, why on earth would you speak up when you know that these leftist goons are going to go out and try to destroy your life? What's up, Mike? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> why? Here's like Russell Westbrook says, man, why not? Because this is the time, now is the time for the new American right to rise up, you know, yeah. embracing all races, all colors and all creeds, converting them. This is how much we love everybody, black, white, yellow, brown, uh, from all different walks of life. We love you so much that we want to convert you uh, and make the face of America uh, Christian, Christian, Roman Catholic. That's that's what we do. And this is the time now more than ever. We need brave stalwarts who are willing to put it all on the line. And I thought, why not me? Why not you? Well, one of the reasons why not you is because w- the minute that you go and you speak out, then they target you and they harass you. I, I, I've seen this, even conservative friends of mine are basically going along with this because they don't want to be attacked. There are store businesses in, in Los Angeles right now. They've got uh, boards on the windows because they don't want to be looted and they've got graffiti on them. I realized it wasn't the rioters who sprayed the graffiti. It was the shop owners. And the, the graffiti says, we support Black Lives Matter, minority owned business. Please, please don't attack us, basically. Please don't, don't loot. What is it that you said that got you fired? A couple things uh, on Twitter, the, the way one does, never says just one, like Lay's chips. Uh, BLM is a terror organization. The simple historical statement of fact, Mike, that for the FBI anyway, uh, the BLM is a BIE, a black identity extremist group. And they copped to that. They responded to that FBI sure. designation in, in 2017. Um you know, Catholic schools, as, as we know, uh, are absolute sufferers of the uh, Stockholm syndrome. Uh, I, I don't know the, the insanity of Stockholm syndrome, the masochism. Right. And they've been, they've been taken hostage by this hostile culture. And yet they seem to be g- giving in to the to the hostile leftist culture. The hostiles who want as a stated goal, Mike, they want to shut out of business all private schooling make it illegal. And they say on their webpage, they want to destroy the Western family, meaning the Christian nuclear family structure. In addition to being these wannabe Jacobins, you know, they're, right. they're weak compared to the Jacobins and, and spray painting my church, burning churches down, murder, arson, uh, mayhem in the cities. They're, they're terrorists. They're well, wannabe no, but, rope spears. But Tim, come on, you, you know, here, you have been told that even though right now there is looting and rioting and murder and destruction going on across the United States in multiple cities, that is completely separate from the peaceful protests that just happened to be going on in exactly the same place at exactly the same time for ostensibly the same reason. Totally different things. Come on, be fair. I'll tell you what it's separate from, Mike. It's separate altogether 100.00% from anything having to do with George Floyd. That's what it's separate course, from. Yeah, yeah. The peaceable protests are pregames, right? Yeah. It's it's daytime pregames. You got to rest sometime when you're some, you know, uh, a filthy wannabe uh, Jacobin waiting out in the street. And, and you, you know, you're being paid by George Soros front groups 
like Anifa. You know, I'm I actually sure. I want I want to pause there for a moment because because the left is saying that this is a conspiracy theory that George Soros is just a boogeyman that he's funding these groups. You can actually look to the founders of Black Lives Matter. You can look at the organizations that they have worked for, that they are continuing to work for and lead, and you can track the donations from George Soros's Open Societies Foundation. This is not some conspiracy theory. You can actually track the money. Uh, nonprofits have paper trails, and, and anybody is free to look at them. Amen. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. It, it, I don't know why more outfits aren't saying that loudly. Yeah. 2016, 2017, the safer bet for um, articulation was that BLM is the terror organization. AG Barr finally, better late than never, declared Anifa a terrorist organization. But until this uh, nonsense over the last two weeks, uh, BLM was well considered the safer bet as a terror organization. And, and also for, for people who don't like that word, they, they, they just are quibbling over that word. You, you've got to get down to what terror means. Terrorism is when people use violence against civilians to affect political ends. That's the most basic definition of terrorism. And does, does that mean that everybody who has used the hashtag Black Lives Matter supports using violence to achieve political ends? No, certainly not. But does that mean that a great many people who are right now out demonstrating on behalf of BLM are using violence against civilians to achieve political ends? Yes, absolutely. And I'll take it one step further. Chris Cuomo the other night on CNN, this is the brother of Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York. He's the Fredo of the Cuomo family. He went on television and he said, show me where it says that protests have to be polite and peaceful. And this is funny because in the First Amendment of the Constitution, it says the people have the right to peaceably assemble, but obviously Chris Cuomo has never read that. What Chris Cuomo is openly advocating here is political violence against civilians. Keith Ellison, the attorney general in Minnesota, same thing. He posed holding a, pic, a, a copy of the Antifa handbook, right? Advocating this kind of political violence. So there's no doubt that this is going on. You said something that is provocative, sure, but something that is easily justifiable and you lose your job for it. Luckily you have a platform. I mean, people at least can listen to you. You can get this out there. How many other people who don't have a major platform is this happening to around the country? Yeah, well, it's emboldening to do. I, I, I'd like to think that without the platform that I have, I'd be, have been willing to do it as well. Um, I want to address the first thing you said about the tawdry nominalism of yeah. not every single one of the people who have ever uttered Black Lives Matter right. are, you know, revolutionaries. Of course not, right? I mean, it, you know, Black Lives Matter is a terror organization, um, is not racist just because black is in the word to oppose right. it, just as the Irish Republican Army uh, doesn't call us to an anti-Irish uh, <laughs> point of view by huh. saying this is a, a Marxist organization. It's Th cheap, That's a cheap great nominal. point. I, I want to I highlight that for a second because that hadn't occurred to me. There's this group, people might not even remember it these days, but there's this group, the IRA, right? And it was these Irish terrorists who were <laughs> setting off bombs and things like that. If you call out and you say, hey, I don't support the violence that's associated with the IRA, that doesn't make you an Irishophobe. That doesn't make you an anti-Irish racist. But no one ever thought that before. Right. There's something hypersensitive uh, uh, about the black issue in America, and it's time yeah. that we get over it. If you're a white man in the streets, you are twice, statistically twice as likely as a black man to be killed by a cop. Only nine people mm. in the last year, nine unarmed black men were killed by cops. It's well, 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 Heather McDonald had numbers. that piece in the Wall Street Journal. She's done great work yes. on this. And it was actually shocking even to me because what we're told by, say, LeBron James, for instance, is every time a black man leaves his home, he is hunted down by this white supremacist power structure. And then I, I looked, I said, how many unarmed black men were killed by police last year? And by the way, unarmed doesn't mean not dangerous, right? Unarmed doesn't right. mean that the, the killing wasn't justified. But let's just use that because that's the topic, that, that's the, the measurement that everyone's using. I thought, what is it, 9,000? No. 900? No. 90? No. We're talking about nine unarmed black men were killed by cops, cops of all races, by the way. And one of those unarmed black men, according to Heather's excellent piece in the Wall Street Journal, 
had a loaded gun in his car during a car chase. Tucker Carlson went on and gave the stories of so many of these people in the circumstances. And, and so, it, it, I mean, this is something we should all be happy about, right? There, the, the, this is not happening. The claims of Black Lives Matter are not true. The foundational claim of Black Lives Matter about Michael Brown being executed with his hands up saying, don't shoot, that's not true. We know from multiple eyewitnesses, black eyewitnesses, grand jury, multiple autopsies, that he reached for the cop's gun and charged the cop. It, it, so it's just founded on lies it, the, the scourge that they're saying exists does not exist. And what's the practical outcome? What's, what, what is the effect of those lies? The effect of those lies is now cities are burning to the ground. People's livelihoods are being destroyed. Uh, people are being actually killed. And, uh, and people's reputations are being ruined and smeared, including in your case. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. I, I, I'd love to talk about my case some, but I think it's really important to stay broad at least for a, a, a half second more. Yeah. People, revolutionaries from, you know, terrorist revolutionaries like Diocletian, who also tried to force Christians to their knees to worship him yeah. instead of the crucifix and the Eucharist. Um, they always have a, a, a kind of pullet bureau of source with a brainwashing campaign. They, do, do people not understand this, Mike? That they're since from Diocletian, Nero to, you know, Robespierre to the, the, the Freemasons of the past to freaking Obama, man, they always say we're going to do our terror. Well, they don't say that part. It's the subtext on the behalves of the low, the mind. I mean, plan. Yeah, it's always, you know, we, well, look, we've got to, we're, we're doing something so good. So if we, if we violate the law, if we spy on us citizens, if we, if we target people, if we, if we kill people, even, you know, in the case of like a Robespierre or, or some, you know, it's the line that's often attributed to Joseph Stalin. You can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. The, the premise being their end goals are so noble and good that it justifies all manner of evil in the meantime. It's a great line, by the way, and I didn't know Soviets had omelets, but that's well, that's one good thing about <laughs> the Soviet state. You know, I mean, it's it's real. So before before we get particular, we got to stay general and just say, do not be useful idiots. Do not yeah. be a Ned Flanders Christians out there. We need to fight back. This is another thing I got in trouble for is saying, again, it's it's equally non edgy and banal right. by the standards of my Twitter account. I can't believe I survived this long, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, no, of but, all uh, the things that you say, I figured, you know, that, that one was right. pretty middle of the road. <laughs> right. Osama bin Laden is a terrorist. It's good. We all cheered when he died. It's like, that is that is not uh, out there stuff. I was not venturing far out there on the branch. Right. It's not far out there on the branch either. I got local media in my hometown, a little north of you, yeah. saying that I said, you know, the police are being too restrained. They should fire upon these semi-mythic peaceful protesters, as we already discussed. The daytime protest is pre-gaming for the real organized event, the main event, the marquee event, the night, the nighttime uh, uh, mayhem and arson. Which I we've said, seen everywhere, yeah. Which, which, which is completely ubiquitous. And yeah. we've all been told about the, the uh, elegant structure of this the calculated structure of it, the, the brick piles strategically laying, the medics that BLM and Antifa have out there, field medics helping people get patched up mm. in, in, a well, uh, in, in well done reportage. Right. So it's, it's really, really important for, for people out there to know how well organized this is. And this also includes the publicity campaign. Don't be a, a useful idiot. One of Lenin's idiots who just right. says, well, they said they're doing something good. Planned Parenthood says that it likes parenthood. No, it's the opposite of that. All lives right. matter. Right. And uh, cops, black cops lives matter. Black property owners lives matter. Before we move off of rules for retrogrades, I just want to put in there for the people now in my hometown who are, are trying to get me as a racist, one of the 40 rules for retrogrades in my book, co-authored with my brother, is there is no room on the new tough American Christian right for racists. None. So, uh, you you know, this, get... is, this is the real key here because there's so much information out there and there's so much disinformation out there that for instance, they, you know, you, you, p people are denying that Antifa is an organized group. Now, those of us who have encountered Antifa, maybe at speaking events, I've certainly had my run-ins with them. We know that it is a very organized group. 
So th- that's happening on one hand. They're denying that they're organizing. Then on the other, there, you know, for instance, there was a pile of, of rocks that was in, up in Sherman Oaks. And uh, this was now being attributed to Antifa leaving them there. The only reason I know Antifa didn't leave them there is I've, I've driven by it a lot of times. So I've seen that particular pile of rocks for many years. Now, is, now, that is then being pointed to and saying, well, see, this is more evidence that it's all a conspiracy theory. Guess what? I've also seen a pile of Antifa protesters organizing at multiple events. So that's not a conspiracy either. There's just so much, so much noise that's going on out there. And so when they went after you, it, it really bugged me personally because uh, the, char- the things they're saying about you, you're a racist, you're a bigot, it's just absurd. But I also had the privilege of writing the foreword to one of your books. And it was a book called Rules for Retrogrades. And in it, I mean, it's, I think it's within the first 10 pages, you say yeah. that there is absolutely no quarter on the right for bigots and, and specifically for racial bigots. So it's just, if, if they did two seconds of Google search on you, they'd know this isn't true. But that's not the point. I don't think they care about the truth. I think they want to ruin your life because you stood up to them. Yes. The, uh, I mean, what can I, how can I say it better than that? Propaganda works. It works 10 times out of 10, a hundred yeah. times out of a hundred. The point of propaganda is not information, but disinformation. They probably, some of them have read my book. Uh, some, some of them are lawyers in town yeah. and, and basically, um, if we can go a little more particular, it's just old fashioned, um, dissenters from the Catholic church and Catholic school. The church gives quarter to them. The dioceses give quarter to them. And, the, the group of petitioners in, in Bakersfield, California, who got me fired, yeah. are nothing other than alums and parents over the last 10 years at uh, Garces Memorial who were, were dissidents and never liked the church's teachings on abortion, gay marriage, contraception, right. and balked at it when I was teaching in the classroom. Um, and and that, that's the connection between the propaganda effort seen, commonly seen by the radical left well, the, and yeah. the, the story. Yeah. I want to I want to get into this this Catholic aspect too, because you you know obviously, uh, not only are we both Catholic, we've gone to mass together, and and uh, but you speak much more specifically about Catholic issues, right? You're you're hyper focused on that, and you're teaching at a Catholic school. You were teaching at a Catholic school, right? You are you are as much you, you are being as honest as you possibly can be about what you're saying about, about this sector of society. And yet the leftist popular culture just can't let you be. It's not like you were teaching at a public school, at a secular school, at Harvard or something, right? You were actually teaching in a Catholic school and they say, no, 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 the Catholic school can't teach Catholic things. The, the, the Catholic school, the, the conservative speaker can't say conservative things. One, one suggestion that has been brought up in, uh, in the Christian world is the Benedict option. Rod Dreher has talked about this, that basically the culture is becoming so hostile to not just Catholics, but but Protestants too, Eastern Orthodox, Jews. I mean, really it's it's hostile to religious people generally. Are we getting to the point where we basically just have to give up the culture and go live in the woods somewhere? No, I, I, Rod Dreher is a smart guy, but, but he's wrong. It, it, okay. it, only unless you, you seriously modify the Benedict option is it correct? What I'm advocating for is a new American right retrogrades uh, Christian. There's rule. There's there's room for for all all people, but it's specifically Christian. More specifically, it's it's functioning on the Thomistic basis of Catholic ideas, right? Natural rights and, and natural law really comes uh, most robustly from the Catholic tradition. And, and actually, and I it, should say here for our uh, for our Protestant viewers and even our even our secular viewers that. When, when you go and think about St. Thomas Aquinas and natural law, you know, so much of the language that we just talk about in our American tradition, the idea of natural rights that were endowed by our creator with certain rights, does come downstream from these sorts of ideas. And, and you wrote a book on this too, sort of reaching out and saying, look, you might not be Catholic, you might not, or you might not think you're Catholic, but a lot of the ideas that you hold dear actually come from the Catholic tradition. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want to be too academic, but the uh, Jefferson and Madison had Bellarmine, uh, Mark, who was a Thomist um, Catholic, marked up in their libraries, as did John Locke and Algernon Sidney. You can't get the ideas of natural rights and natural law from John Locke and Algernon Sidney. 
uh, they had to get those from the ultimate, the enemy of their arch enemy, Robert Filmer, who wrote this book, Patriarcha. Robert Filmer was responding to Bellarmine and Bellarmine's really uh, the ideological source of the American revolution. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, it's Thomas because all the great things, Thomas is the master of those who know. Right. And by the way, a lot of people don't know Thomas is the first expositor in human history in a an advanced, robust philosophical treatise of the just right to rebellion. It comes from Thomas hmm. before Bellarmine. Locke and Sidney just borrow from that. Aquinas is the one. So, And he distinguishes, Mike, between sedition and insurrection, by the way, meaning if it's just law, if you have natural law on your side, yeah. you can even you can kill the tyrant even, Aquinas says. First one to ever say that. However, wow. if it's on the other side, sedition versus insurrection, he says to squash it. He's, uh, you know, people, Christians need not be pacifists. Weak need Ned Flanders, cowardly pacifists, which is what we allowed ourselves to be. And I feel it, it's too akin to what uh, Dreyer is suggesting. Smart man though he is, no, we don't need to be weak Ned Flanderses. We might need to chunk out a portion of the country for ourselves in the in the near to middling future. Yeah. That might be what we need to do, but it's it's not the same thing as the Benedict option. We are called the fight. To, 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 if we need be, to, to defend our own property if the police are told to stand down. It's what the Christian does. To be strong, there's room for everyone. We love everyone, and we want to work together the retrogrades, the new American right, with all colors, all creeds. Of course, we'd like to convert them. That's, that's the ultimate goal. But it, that's not what this is about. This is political action, and we have to join arms with all the peoples of goodwill and be tough. It's that's this is what the young people want is toughness. I'm thinking maybe Montana, you know, when I because I agree with you, I want to be in the culture. I want to keep the fight up. Maybe we need our own little chunk of the country. Montana looks pretty good. I, and I, I'm I'm only half joking because I've been in L.A. during all of these peaceful riots. And I, you know, the very wonderful, like noble, peaceful arson. And I've just been looking around and I said, when when is L.A. going to do something? L.A. announces yesterday that their response to the riots is they're going to defund the police by $150 million. I don't know how much longer conservatives or Christians or, or any sort of normal person can, can remain in these kind of leftist hotbeds as the cities are burning to the ground. I do want to get specifically on what you're going to do because, you know, uh, they've taken away your livelihood. You've got six kids, one of whom has very special needs, you know, it needs a lot of attention and care. What are you going to do now? <laughs> That's, can we, let, let's brainstorm this together, man. Yeah. I mean, I got you, you're, you got a good mind. I got a good mind. Let's sit around. No, I mean, I, like you said, I got a platform, which is, which has been burgeoning anyway. I had, yeah. had this uh, worldwide podcast with, with Dr. Taylor Marshall. Then I went off on my own. And, uh, it is untoward, remarkable timing because my, my eldest daughter, Abby, who, who, you know, you were going to come, come see us when we were staying yeah. close to your neck of the woods in the hospital. She had a humongous brain surgery that she's recovering from two months ago. And uh, she's mostly over recovery. It's all gone amazing. You know, God is good. God sees you out the corner of his eye. He really, really does. But and it's just great that I got that incredibly large uh, hemispherectomy surgery done with on on uh, insurance dime. But the point is, and for people who don't the, know what that means, that they they removed like a portion of your of your daughter's brain. I mean, this is a v- very serious surgery. Yes, uh, it, it's, it used to be actually they take out the entire hemisphere, which is causing the basically ceaseless seizures. I had Abby, by the way, in. Uh, Rome, Italy, when I was working on a PhD 12 years ago, and we, we left it behind and I went to law school. But, uh, and she's had nothing but seizures since, since we kicked this off, uh, we kicked it back like a can down the road for, for 12 years, but cause it's scary. Um, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, hemispherectomies are mainly just diswiring the bad side of the brain, okay. uh, w- which, which is causing the seizures, but they took out sizable chunks of the brain. It was really, really traumatic. And we were living in our RV right near the hospital there in Orange County for like three weeks. Yeah. It was it was a crazy time. And when I look back on it, Garces Memorial, you know, I would get emails from the school, the Garces family's praying for you, that, you know, you're, you're part of the Garces family, Abby's like a niece. And then and then to, to capitulate to the left in such a vile, cowardly fashion. To throw you under the bus and smear you as some kind of bigot or, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really awful. I mean, I, 
I am glad at least that you've got this platform and, you know, people, people can go out and buy and read your books, Catholic Republic and Rules for Retrogrades, if you want to read a foreword by yours truly. Uh, and, you know, listen to the show and listen, you know, even to older episodes of your other shows and shows with Taylor Marshall. Uh, they're really great content. I know there's also a GoFundMe that was set up which raised a considerable amount of money. I don't know how far it's going to go with six kids, but, uh, you know, I would direct people to that as well. How's the GoFundMe going? The, the GoFundMe is going well as, uh, we concern ourselves fin- financially. The problem is this, uh, viewpoint discrimination, a, a, a non-governmental, uh, viewpoint discrimination, which we've been talking about all show long, a nuanced private sector version it, it has far reach. We've already had the account put on hold like two or three times. I seriously doubt that I'm ever going to see the money. I think a lot yeah. of your viewers have already been uh, generous and dug into the pocket to help. Thank you very much. If you get a refund on that, you can go to timothyjgordon.com, just my name, timothyjgordon.com. And if you feel so inclined, if you're still in the position, once you get that, I think, inevitable refund, because they're, they're calling me a racist, then um, we, we have a donate button set up there. And I, I'd appreciate it a lot. I, I, I want to keep making good content and I'd like to do it full time. Yeah. You know, I mean, every storm cloud has a silver lining and, and maybe it is the case that this will give you the opportunity to, uh, you know, create more content. You've got really great and interesting things to say. And, uh, you know, hopefully that there, there's not too much targeting and distress. I know they were trying to dox you, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of vitriol coming your way right now from the radical left. It's ugliness, man. But I'll tell you one, one thing. I can, I can damn well take it. And I think what America needs right now is someone that just looks it down and says, like, bring it on, man. Because uh, it, it, it would be tough for someone that, that's not situated uh, the way I'm situated, but it doesn't matter. At a certain point, we're coming up to the 4th of July at my weenie roast with my friends for the last 10 years. I look them in the eyes and I say, I- I'm serious. What do you think we're doing here, man? Do you think this is all about, because they're all good Christian, you're Protestant, Catholic, whatever, people of peace, generally speaking. And it's fun. It's a nice holiday. Fireworks are great. You know, weenie roasts are phenomenal, particularly if it's more like a steak roast. But <laughs> I, I mean, that's not the point, man. These were real men. We're not, we're not mythologizing them. I mean, the, the, yeah. the genius that went into someone like a James Wilson or a James Madison, a Thomas Jefferson, the genius behind their ideas, these were based, red-pilled <laughs> political geniuses <laughs> right, right. who put their fortunes and their honors and their lives on the line. And I, I'm sorry to say, Mike, I see none of that. I see none of it in America. I see a, a fat, cowardly nation that I want I want to inspire. So it's just like, man, lead, lead from the front. Like, I don't care. Let it happen to me. Let it happen unto me. And uh, I, I, maybe people can be inspired by this is this is the best you got, like Theoden of Rohan says. Like this is this is all you got. Like bring it, man. Uh, it's it's not formal viewpoint discrimination yet. They haven't taken the First Amendment out of the Constitution yet. Not yet. And I say bring it on. Practically, yeah. they have sometimes, but not not officially, at least. Yeah. True. That's True. right. I, you know, it, it does uh, it does remind me of that idea that tough times make tough men. Or it just destroys society, but it's definitely one of those two <laughs> things. And we look back and we say, gosh, you know, if only I could be like a Thomas Jefferson, if only I could be like an Alexander Hamilton. Well, uh, you know, now maybe you've got the opportunity to prove yourself. There's, there's an ancient Chinese curse that I've heard before, which is may you live in interesting, interesting times. times. And we're, yes, uh, we're, we're living through that right now. And it, uh, it does give a lot of chaos and there's a lot of misery and there's a lot of hardship and there's a lot of people trying to dox you and ruin your life. But there's also a lot of opportunity and maybe, maybe as uh, some people who still have hope in the, the American country and the American tradition have, have said, maybe our best days really do lie ahead, but the only way out is going to be through. The only way out's always through and, and damn straight to all that other stuff you said. It's, it's not fun. It's, it's kind of a second, second and a half, third bad day in a row for yeah. me, but I, so, I mean so. it, man, from the heart of going through something like this, I'm not exaggerating you, Mike, you know, Bakersfield's it looms small on the the cosmopolitan landscape, but it's one of America's 50 largest cities. <laughs> they are all the no, local news stations are painting me as the opposite of what I am, uh, a, a racist. And it's it's you just have to look at it and laugh. Laughter is war. And um, here, here's for the fight, man. And you should but you should take great solace because 
you know, whatever the media call you, the opposite is true. So if the, if the media were calling you like a really good person, then you should be worried. Because then, you, then you'd really have to take a look at your own character. That's so right. If LeBron James thinks you're a good person, yeah. then you, you got to have a look at the man in the mirror. That's and right. I, I'm asking him to change his ways. Go you know? have a look at uh, Tim Gordon, timothyjgordon.com, Rules for Retrogrades podcast. Get the book, Rules for Retrogrades. Get the book, Catholic Republic. Maybe if you uh, have a couple nickels going together in your pocket, head on over to that GoFundMe page or to timothyjgordon.com. Tim, man, thanks for coming on. I uh, hope you stay strong in the next few days. Probably going to be tough, but hey, the only way out is through, as we were, as we were saying. Thank you so much, man. You you can all count on it. Stay strong. Everyone out there, uh, rise. All right. Tim Gordon. Thanks, everybody. 